once described his work as a relentless grind with an occasional miracle. Throughout Australia, tens of thousands of people are patiently working with clay in search of that occasional miracle. Most will never find it. But the nationwide boom in ceramics is almost a miracle in itself. In defiance of glossy mass production, plastic convenience and economics, Australians are turning to the potter's wheel with unprecedented enthusiasm. Only a few have won international recognition, but the majority have discovered the satisfaction of creative craftsmanship, and that is reward enough. The Renaissance in ceramics in Australia became evident in the early 1960s, and since then it's developed and matured at an astonishing rate. It has widened its scope to embrace objects far removed from utilitarian dishes and pots. For some, it has become an art form. Sydney ceramist Vladimir Tiki has spent 35 years striving to inject life, feeling, beauty, form and colour into clay. He's won international awards for his work, but most of the production from his studio comprises traditional ceramic objects. Only occasionally is he able to work on a canvas of clay as big as this. This wall of clay represents only one-fifth of a huge ceramic mural by Vladimir Tiki for the Ex Services Club at Orange in the central west of New South Wales. His commission was to create a mural 74 feet long and 10 feet high, one of the biggest works of ceramic art in Australia. The clay, five tons of it, was specially selected from a pit near Sydney. It's a coarser clay than normally used by potters and has a high metallic content, important features that contribute to the final surface texture. Much of the clay was gouged out of the thick wall, but all of it eventually went back onto the mural to help build up the images. Although Vladimir had done preliminary design work, artistic inspiration dominated the final detail as the mural took shape. Before it was ready for sculpturing, the clay had to be put through an extruder to eliminate pockets of air. It took three men a full day to erect the wall of clay needed for this section of the mural. Each panel took about two weeks to sculpture before it was ready for the first firing in the kilns. Keeping the clay at the right consistency was one of the biggest problems. Hot sun on the tin roof of the studio accelerated evaporation. So the clay had to be sprayed several times each day with a fine mist of water. At night, it was covered with a plastic curtain. Careful plans had to be made for reassembling the wall of clay after it had been cut into hundreds of pieces for firing. As each piece was removed, it was identified on the back with a number related to the cutting pan. Since coming to Australia from Czechoslovakia in 1969, Vladimir Tiki has made dozens of huge wall murals. Economic recession has reduced the demand for works on such a grand scale, but he believes architectural ceramics have a big future in Australia. They're appropriate, he says, because of the Australian love of spaciousness. They're also particularly suitable for outdoor decoration, because brilliant sunlight enhances the colours and shapes of a ceramic wall. The first firing of the biscuits, as the pieces are called, takes 18 hours. They are then allowed to cool and stabilise for a week before the glaze is applied to the reassembled mural. The glazes identify the artist as clearly as his sculpturing. Through colours imparted by glazes during the second firing, the ceramist tries to impose another dimension of his character on his work. Vladimir Tiki has been working in ceramics most of his life, starting when only 15 years old at the Ceramic School of Prague. By 1960, he was head designer of Czechoslovakia's Institute of Applied Art. He defected to the West eight years ago. Until Vladimir began work here, very little had been done in Australia in the field of architectural ceramics. There had been some cautious experiments with mosaics and abstracts, but it wasn't until quite recently that architects generally recognised a valid role for this kind of work.
Today, it would cost up to $15,000 for a ceramic mural as big as the one created by Vladimir Tiki for the ex services Club at Orange. The theme of the work is the nature of the world in the second half of the 20th century. A juxtaposition of images reflecting space exploration and a world where some people still live close to the Stone Age. A world as complex as a computer and as beautiful as butterflies and birds. Examples of his work are now found in a diversity of places from a suburban driveway to the centre point commercial development in the heart of Sydney. Tiki's interpretation of Australian sportsmen raised a few eyebrows at the Scottish Sports and Social Club in the Sydney suburb of Arncliffe. What could have been a dreary clinical lobby for a city office block becomes an artistic experience through ceramic architecture. But it's not really a new idea. Ceramic murals were used in Babylon when it was the largest city in the world more than 2,600 years ago.